CNM is in the business of working with other nonprofits to help them get results for the community. We do that through our strategic management and data expertise, as well as through our leading edge technology using SaaS software. As you can imagine with COVID, there's so many more issues to deal with in the community. Organizations that do support um, COVID with the work that they're doing, um, as I say, have doubled in size. I mean, we have so many nonprofits we're working with who are telling us that they can't keep up with the demand. And we've had some of them tell us that they are running on fumes right now, that they are, are living off of their operating reserves and hoping to still be around at the end of the year. So, so you know, everybody's hurting. Most of the people, almost all of the people that get involved with nonprofits, they do it because of the cost. So here you have this situation, this pandemic, that has this huge effect on their operations and how they run their businesses. They're really having to think about things in a very different way. Several years ago, we launched um, our Steen Impact Services, where we help nonprofits make sure they're collecting the right data, interpreting it the right way, acting on it the right way. So when they're hit with a pandemic, they were much more effective and resilient and able to you know, be creative in what to do and more on top of what was going on with the organization versus those that were not. One example I would give you is Austin Street Center. It's an emergency homeless shelter here in Dallas. And when we first started working with them, they were um, serving about 1,600 people a year. And what we found was that they were treating everyone the same, but what the data, when they were collecting the right data, what it was saying was that, in fact, everybody needed to be treated differently. So they totally changed their model. They totally changed the services they were providing, how they were providing those services. Uh, today, you know, I'm pleased to report that they have doubled in size. They, they're now serving 3,000 people uh, with the same amount of money <laughs> and the same amount of staff, which is really amazing. So you put that situation and combine it with the pandemic, and you know, they, they, you can imagine the kind of demand. Well, fortunately, because they made that change, they're able to respond and serve even more individuals. So, so that's you know example of where a nonprofit, because they were already operating in a in a way that um, was efficient and as I said, data driven, they were able to take action um, and really you know make a difference and be responsive to those to those needs. Another example I would cite is Meals on Wheels. Y'all know what they do well. Uh, with 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 COVID, you have a lot of people with underlying conditions who were afraid to go to the grocery store. Now, Meals on Wheels does not typically serve that group, but because they couldn't get out, um, a lot of uh, people in the community were coming to them saying, "Hey, you know, you need to somehow you know do something with your services and expand and try to help these people." Um, so, um, uh, again, another CN Impact client, and, and I'm not here to you know make this all about CN Impact, but they are, um, and so they were able to um, you know, really make, make a pretty quick change and adapt to the situation and offer these new services and get funding for it. Um, so, so that's huge. And it's interesting because um, they have come back to us and said, we um, are due for um, uh, to update our strategic plan. And we think that we need to step back in a really big way and think about the future of our organization and what do we wanna be doing? I mean, what does the world look like post COVID? And, and should we continue to provide these types of services to those with underlying conditions? What other services should we be providing? Another example I would give you is Caseta Catholic High School um, is, is working with at-risk youth to help them complete their high school education. And, and all of uh, what they offered was in, in classroom, right? In-person uh, classroom and uh, curriculum. And so they stepped back and said, oh, well, obviously we can't do that anymore. Now, you know, what do we do going forward? What's good for the kids? Um, so they came up with a total rewrite of their curriculum um, where some of the content they felt they still had to deliver in person, some they moved to online, and some they actually are doing sort of a hybrid model in terms of what they're offering. And then they're regularly checking back with the kids and their parents and, and the community uh, stakeholders as well 
about what's working, what's not working. So they're in a position to very quickly make changes um, to, to that curriculum, depending on what the needs are. COVID has caused a lot of nonprofits to step back and say, yeah, boy, I think the world's really changing here. How is it changing exactly? What does that mean for us? What do we need to do differently? We have a lot of nonprofits coming to us right now asking us for help with strategic planning, asking us to do what's called an environmental scan, where you collect and analyze data with respect to what's going on in the community. There are a lot of things we have to do in terms of the expertise we bring, um, leveraging the SaaS technology. I'm really proud of the nonprofits. And I, I actually think that when we get through this, we get on the other side of this, that the nonprofit community is actually going to be a lot stronger.